Hello everyone, welcome to my channel. For those who came here for the first time, I am Engineer J. I am a civil engineer by profession. I am also currently teaching as an engineering professor. Now in this video, I am going to teach you on one of the most important topic in strength of materials. We have the economic section, which is also the foundation of your major subjects in your reinforced concrete design and your steel design. Okay, so why we need to know about this um, topic? Now, one of the important or one of the problems that we are encountering in construction industry is over design. Now, we know as a, as a civil engineer and as a structural engineer, of course, it is our top priority to ensure the safety of our clients or the users of our project that we are building. However, we should also take into account the economical aspect of our project. Okay? Now, to ensure the quality of the project, we usually tend to choose materials which have a larger cross-section since we know the durability or the strength capacity of the materials depends on its cross-section. However, there would be or there could be uh, materials or shapes that is less cheaper however it could have the same quality or the same strength capacity with the more expensive one okay so now in this video i am going to teach you on how to choose a material or a shape which is safest and at the same time economical and budget friendly now in steel design or in steel beam design we incorporate um, different type of shapes okay and we have here these shapes here these are usually used for steel construction the wide flange shape or the w shape this one letter a in which it resembles with um, letter i okay, alphabet i in which we have two flanges here okay these horizontal members here are f called flange okay this one and the vertical member here is called the web and we have also the depth. The depth is from the um, sur top surface of the upper flange to the bottom surface of the bottom flange. And we have um, each flange has equal width, okay, and it has corresponding thickness. Um, wide flange is usually used as column or as a beam. Now we also have the T shape, okay, so it's obviously called as T since it resembles to um, letter T. Okay, it is only one flange, but it has a web. Okay, now we also have the channel shape C. Okay, it where it has two flanges. Okay, and it's a web. Now this shape here is usually used as a purlins. Ito yung member that connects trusses. Okay, this can be found sa mga court, sa gymnasium. Okay, sa mga truss roof and so on now um, we have also the angle shape this l here l or reversed l now we have two type of angle shape we have equal leg angle shape in which the width of the two legs we have two legs here are equal so their widths are equal but we also have an equal angle shape in which um, we have here the long leg and the short leg so they have different dimension now we also have double angle shape okay if we have other angle shape on its opposite side okay now the purpose of this um, angle shape it is usually used sa mga trusses or these are uh, members that is usually um, used to create trusses okay like sa mga roof as roofing or as for bridges Okay, that's the purpose of angle shape. Now, we also have hollow structural section. It, it is usually used as column or a beam. Okay, now, in designing a steel members, we have a specifications that we need to follow. We have what we call the steel table. Okay, EISC or the American Institute for Steel Construction, they provide um, steel manual in which they have um, specifications for each um, member shape okay but in this video i am going to show you the steel table coming from the book 
of Pytel and Qsalaas. This one here, okay, these are the specifications for available or commercially available uh, members. Now, we have here the first one, we have the wide flange section, In this one is, is in SI units, okay? Now, we have the designation of our wide flange, it's in terms of um, W, okay, this one, this is the designation. When we have W, that means we have wide flange member. Now, we have wide flange 920 by 449, in which 920 here, this represents the depth of our uh, member of our shape. Now, 449 here, this represents the linear mass of our um, steel member. Just like what we have here, the mass that is in kilogram per meter, that's the linear mass. So, uh, the weight of the member in every one meter. So, we have 449 kilogram. Now, in designing a or in choosing the appropriate wide flange, we need to choose material which has the lightest um, weight. Okay? Yun yung um, economical that's the how you are going to choose for the appropriate section you choose the lightest possible weight okay so we have the specification this area here this is the cross-sectional area of the flange the depth okay then we have also the width the width of the flange this one this is the flange we also have the thickness okay the thickness of the flange then we have the web the web thickness again the web it's the vertical member of our flange okay we also have um two moment of inertia here we have axis xx and axis yy so we have moment of inertia along the x axis now if you place your wide flange like this one okay when it's um web is positioned vertically just like this one so we choose i along the x-axis but if we rotate this one in which our web here is positioned horizontally then we choose the moment of inertia along the y-axis remember that so it depends on the orientation of your wide flange if it is vertically positioned or horizontally positioned now in this case again we have moment of inertia along the x-axis this one that is in terms of 10 raised to the 6 a millimeter to the fourth we have the section modulus in which we know that section modulus from our previous video this is equal to the moment of inertia over the c now c again that is the distance or the largest distance from the neutral axis to the outmost surface or outer fiber okay if you remember that one from our previous um, discussion we have all we have also the radius of gyration now you will be using this in your steel design subject now we have also the axis along the yy okay we have the moment of inertia along the yy again you will be using this if your orientation of of your wide flange is when your web here is horizontally um, positioned we have also different section modulus since our section mo of modulus here depends on the value of our i and the value of our c and we have different also r or radius of gyration okay these are the specifications for each designation just like here we have wide flange 840 by 359 by 329 by 299 again 840 here this represents the depth 359 329 here this represents the linear mass of our wide flange these are commercially available or um this is the these are some of the references if you want to order a um a specific section for wide flange okay so ito yung ibibilhin nyo or these are the designation aside from wide flange we also have the again this is coming from the book of Python and Kusalaas AISC has also their own steel manual again they, ha they, all, they, are, they also have the same designations okay now we have here um, the angle shape this one look at this figure here the angle shape now the, the designation is different from the wide flange now we have here L203 by 203 in which two 203 here this represents the width of the leg and this one here represents as well as the width of the other leg now take note the two legs have the same width okay so therefore this is an example of equal leg 
angular shape or L shape. Now, 28.6 here, this represents the thickness of our leg. Okay, the thickness of the leg. Remember that. So, 25.4 is the thickness of the leg. Again, the same as with the wide flange, we choose the lightest possible shape no, as the economical section. We have the area, the area or the cross-sectional area. Now, in this case, we have three, okay, three axes. Now, look at the figure if we have our angle of rotation here. Now, now take note, we have Y here. The only difference is that we have Y. Now, the Y here, that is the location of the centroid of our angular shape. Now, look at the figure, our Y here. This is the portion where the centroid of our angular sh shape from the bottom of our of the leg okay so then we have also the x this one this is the location of the center from the um leftmost of our or left mo leftmost edge of our angular shape now what's the use of this one you will be using the centroid especially when you want to compute for the shear stress in our beam okay so remember that one so we have y and the x which represents the location of the centroid of our leg now if you um, forget the purpose of this value here then you just refer yourself to the figure oh, look just look at the figure so that you will know what is x and what is y now remember again we have different or we have a lot of um, steel manual available in the internet so you just look for your own manual which is of course you choose um, steel manual or steel table which is um, complete okay and then do lahat yung shapes then we have the other shape we have the c or the channel section now in the channel section this is expressed as c 380 by 74 380 here this is the depth 74 here this is the mass or the linear mass so we have different shapes for um c shape no these are commercially available and if not so you can order it from the manufacturer now we have we still have the same designation the cross-sectional area we have the depth we have the thickness we have the thick the width of the flange, the web thickness, okay? Then we have two different uh, axes here in which I, you choose moment of inertia along the x-axis if your C shape here is positioned like this one, like this in the figure here. But you choose I along the y-axis if the C shape is, is rotated along its y-axis if ang ating web is horizontally positioned. Now, X here, this one is the location of the center from the leftmost edge. Now, look at the X here. This X is the location of the center of our shape. Now, obviously, our Y here is the midpoint of the depth or the half of the depth, correct? So, you do not need to, um, to compute for the location of our centroid along the Y-axis because the depth is given. You just divide it by 2. Now, in Pytel and Kusala steel table, they have also um, steel table in English unit, okay? We have in terms of inch, okay? Okay, and so on. So, you can choose. It depends on the problem, you now whether you choose the SI unit or the um, English unit. I would suggest that if you want to solve problem, you look for steel manual or steel table. You can look for... Um, still table from the Pytel and Kusalaas and for AISC or American Institute for Steel Construction. Now, in the second part of this discussion, we will try to solve a problem. So, we will try to design a beam by choosing the lightest and the most economical section. So, if you want to watch the part 2 of this discussion, I provided the link in the description. But guys, don't forget to subscribe to my channel, like this video, and hit the notification bell. Thank you guys for watching. See you in my next videos. God bless.